Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take advantage of some of the powerful tools built into Blender to manipulate these objects, and we're going to create these as rigid body dynamic objects, which is in version 2.66. All right, so what we have is each one, I need to get the toolbar up here like this, and I want to turn this into an active object, because say I want these all to collide. Maybe this is our little collider. I want this object to collide with the cube, that one, every one to collide with the cube. Well, you know from previous lessons on the rigid body dynamics first I would, thing I have to do is I have to turn that into an active object and then I come over here and make sure I'm in the physics tab up here and down here I have to make animated pressed here because I want to keyframe this so for instance maybe I started here and I press I for location and then maybe up here at 120 I press G shift Z and move it so it collides with it like that and I press I for a location as well like this and then that would have to be a rigid body as well but it doesn't need the animated button checked so let's run it and see what happens whoops I also need this to be passive so they don't fall through there okay now let's run it so let's see so it just runs there's the keyframe and it knocks it out of the way or just at least it knocks it so that's one way to do it but so let's I'm going to control Z out of that so I don't have those keyframes anymore. All right, so the keyframes are gone. It's still set as a active object. We'll do it a simpler way. So with this one, I'm going to make it an active object. It's also set it as animated. That's not set by default typically. And this one, I'll move. Oh, it's good enough there. I'll make that active and make that animated. This one, I'll make an active rigid body object, and that'll be animated. And this one will be active but not animated and we'll make sure the plane is passive so now I have all five of these as rigid body objects so I press alt a nothing should really happen except well that one did I guess it was off the surface just a little bit but now yet I still want to make these collide in here like this so the easy way one of the tools that's really in here that's powerful you'll see is this push pull tool so what you can do normally if you just grab it like this an object and go over to object under the transform button and go over to push pull like this and you move the thing around nothing really happens because what it requires is more than one object so I'll grab this one this one and this one whoops not that one I better get those again but do that again that that and that so I have those four objects like this and what the tool does it allows your objects to converge upon each other or diverge from each other and so we'll take advantage of that by here's our beginning position for each one of those and I'll press I and make that a location keyframe so I'm setting keyframes for each object and then I'll come up here to frame say 140 somewhere in there I'll go to object transform push pull and so now what this does just by moving the mouse it converges them this way or they diverge if I keep going so we'll just converge it up to you know, right about there. We're going to see what happens to the cube and everything else when they all collide. Well, I'm curious to know, right? In fact, we'll even go a little bit further. We'll go all the way through it. And I'll set I as a location keyframe. All right, I'll get rid of this. So I'll go full screen. Zoom in a little bit. All right, let's see. Well, maybe. All right, let's see what happens. Alt A. It's going to come around. So it crunches it out and pushes it out. So, you know, well, who knows what the effect is. But anyway, it kind of gives you an idea. It's a powerful little tool, and it's a lot easier than setting individual keyframes on each one. And then if you go take a look, remember, you can always come up here and grab a graph editor with a window, grab the graph editor, and then you can see I've actually set, go full screen with the control up arrow. There's the cone, the cylinder, the echosphere, and the cube, and you can see the individual keyframes. You can press this and you get the location keyframes for each one, like that, or you just grab, you know, you can grab them individually. There's that location, or there's that location, and there's that location. Got it? Okay, well, that's it for this lesson, and I'll see you in the next lesson.